Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Ranking Member Crapel. Thanks for holding today's hearing. And Mr. McCallop, thank you for your service at USDA. Um, we're now a year and a half into the Biden administration. We're just now getting a nominee for Chief Agnot Negotiator before the committee. And while the administration has dragged its feet on making this position a priority, our nation's agricultural producers have been without a leading voice on the global stage, which I think is simply inexcusable. Um, it's all the more inexcusable when our ag community is dealing with 40-year high inflation, rising input costs, supply chain challenges, and increased international competition. I hope Mr. McKellop's nomination serves as a turning point for the administration when it comes to trade, especially for America's farmers and ranchers. Um, Mr. McCallop, I remain deeply concerned that the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework fails to include market access for agriculture. For generations, a large part of our nation's economic success has been based on the U.S. advocating for more, not less, open markets. For example, U.S. food and uh, products exports grew from $46.1 billion in 1994 to more than $177 billion in 2021, which is largely due to greater market access opportunities for American exporters. Under this administration, however, there are no trade agreements under discussion, and increased market access for any U.S. product seems to be a taboo subject. Meanwhile, other countries, including China, are driving ahead with new trade agreements and open market access for their agricultural products. So if confirmed, how will you advocate for market access opportunities for U.S. farmers and ranchers, and what are some specific market access opportunities and tariff reductions that would benefit U.S. agricultural interests? Yeah, thank you, Senator Thune. Appreciate that that question. Um, and you referenced the position being vacant. Uh, and I assure you, if you talk to, you know, anyone who's worked with me, they know that I will uh, pedal harder to make up for lost time uh, to make sure that we get the kind of results for market access that uh, that our farmers want. Um, IPEV has four pillars, and trade is one of those four pillars. And when I initially, uh, you know, studied how the structure was set up, I thought that. You know, trade only being one of the four uh, doesn't really, you know, balance with what farmers would expect in terms of getting uh, results for sending their products over to, to Asia. Um, the way, if confirmed, that I would approach IPEV and be an advocate within the administration is to not think of it the way we think of a traditional four-pillar building, but think of a lodgepole structure where trade is the centerpiece and the most uh, central and to the actual structural integrity of IPEV. So if confirmed, I would push very hard for, number one, trade to be a much larger percentage of the results uh, compared to, you know, clean economies or the connected economies, the um, uh, other s sections of IPEV. Um, because, again, I think that if we are able to, as we so far have gotten better access to beef in Japan, uh, better access to pork in India, that we can triple our efforts and essentially ensure that IPEV contains the kinds of market access that your ranchers are expecting in South Dakota. Um, I believe I'm the advocate to help get that done, and, and I look forward to pushing for that within the IPEV structure and other ones that we have underway right now, too. So you, you agree that greater market access is a fundamental component of American agriculture if we're going to compete in the Indo-Pacific? Yeah, absolutely. Not just in the Indo-Pacific, but around the globe. I, I think, you know, a lot of the things that our farmers are providing, I think our farmers' products sell themselves, um, that they are the best quality of anywhere in the world, the best reliability, and that there are consumers around the globe that want those products. But we've got governments in those countries that are standing essentially between your farmer, your rancher, and that consumer over there. So it's going to be my duty to break down those barriers and to give our farmers a chance to sell their products and show what they can do. That is, and, and, and we need um, free trade agreements. I mean, th this is an area of the world where we ought to be um, competing and competing hard, uh, but in order for that to happen, we've got to focus on market access and not a lot of the other stuff that oftentimes gets mentioned in the IPEF. Um, let me ask you one question about uh, an issue that's important in my state of South Dakota. We've got cattle producers who work hard every day to produce high-quality beef. Um, Americans recognize this, and they want to know where their food's coming from, which is why I'm a longtime supporter of mandatory country of origin labeling, or what we call MCOOL. Last year, I introduced the American Beef Labeling Act, which would direct the office of the U.S. Trade Rep to develop a WTO-compliant means of reinstating cool for beef. Um, if confirmed, would you commit to working with me and my staff on finding a path forward on cool to help address the concerns of livestock producers in South Dakota and across the country. 
Thank you, Senator Thune. You know, as part of my career, I actually worked on implementation of COOL at USDA. So I see the value that consumers want, uh, knowledge and transparency, and certainly the American brand sells itself when the uh, consumer has a chance to know uh, when they're able to get uh, American products. So my priority as chief agricultural negotiator would be to arrive at a policy and approach that can withstand future challenge and so that we don't have a system where the pendulum is swinging back and forth, but that we can get something in place that can be more permanent and something that our consumers can gain um, trust in and know will be there for them as a signal in the marketplace. We'll look forward to working with you on that and um, expect that you will be a fierce advocate uh, for us on this issue. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank